This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this 2019 Sandpiper model 384 QBOX. All right. I'm on the door side of the trailer here right now. Uh, let me see. You have you have a little kitchenette in here. Or I shouldn't say call it a kitchen. I'm sorry. It's an outdoor kitchen. Okay. And you have a refrigerator uh, and running water. Uh, you have a microwave, obviously, lights, that sort of thing, and some counter space. Uh, you have a grill that hangs back here, if you can see it. Keep in mind, the grill has to be connected to a quick connect LP fitting, which is, in this case, it's right here. So it comes with the hose to connect it also. Make sure there's a gas valve on the side, if you can see it. It's, uh, it's vertical right now, but once you attach the hose, you turn it to horizontal position to, to turn it on. So that's where you get your gas from the... This connects right to the two 30-pound cylinders, so uh, it gets the gas from the system. Okay. Sorry about the camera work, as usual. Now, this one has a self-leveling system on it. It's a, a six-point uh, system. It's got two in the rear, two in the middle, and two up front, of course, the landing gear, so that's six points. Uh, it's auto-level system. I'll show you that when we get to it on the other side in the... The main controls are inside, but you can also operate it from the outside. Of course, these steps here lead to a, a, a small half bath, so you can run in and out here, so you don't have to. Kids don't have to run through the trailer and that sort of thing to use the bathroom when you're everybody's out camping. Uh, these steps here fold right into the trailer. Keep in mind that if you're on uneven terrain and you need to adjust the length of the legs, you can always pull this pin here, and there's another one on the other side, uh, so you can. Lengthen them or shorten them, whatever you need to do. Okay. You have a power here. That's for a sprayer to hook up. We're still cleaning your trailer here, so it's a little dirty here. But um, you've got outside speakers. This is a pass-through basement, of course. Uh, you have a spare tire in here. Um, you've got an, an antenna out plus power to hang a TV or to set a TV in here if you choose to. Uh, that's the sprayer I just told you. There's a sprayer that goes that attaches to that port. That's it right there. We'll look at the other stuff when we get to the other side, okay? All right. So, this is where your hydraulics are. That is your reservoir right there, okay? Uh, the stabilizers, of course, are hydraulic. Um, you have storage here, and then your LP is in here two 30 pounders as you can see now the doors are going to be replaced for you I'm sure you've talked to your salesman about that also the the door I just opened into the basement and this basement door although they work they're just not right so we're going to replace those for you also you can still use it until then it's no big deal um, wait a minute one second here I went too far too fast so you have battery here so you got two batteries hooked together at uh, 12 volts, so it just doubles the storage capacity. This is your power inverter right here. Okay, the switch to operate it's inside. I'll show you that when we get to it. Okay. So, this is a kill switch for your battery. Alright, so uh, when you want to disconnect the batteries, when you put it into storage, you can just kill it right here. Um, this is an auto leveler, but the one we're going to use is the one inside. It's more, uh, it has more features and it's easier to show you, so I'll show you that, but keep in mind, right on this door, on the inside of this door, there's a, there's the directions for it. It tells you all about it, so you can refer to it the first few times when you're learning how to use it. All right, this is your water hook up here. Now you have a, a um, canister for for a water filter if you want to put it in there. If you do use it, you have to uh, change it out every season. So you would, before you winterize in the fall, you'd throw it out, and then after you dewinterize in the spring, you'd put a clean one in. Um, these are ends for satellite and park cable, right? This is to bypass your water heater. Um, right now it's in bypass mode because it's winterized. That means there's antifreeze into, uh, in the system, and the, so the water heater is bypassed, so you don't get the antifreeze into the water heater when you're, when you're winterizing it, okay? Um, you fill your city water here, which is the most common way to get water. If you happen to go to a, a campground that doesn't have plumbing on the campsites, you can fill your fresh water tank ahead of time right here and uh, use the onboard pump to pump your water. All right. 
This is another faucet, and this sprayer will plug right into that into here also. All right, you've got your tank valves here. Um, so you have two black tanks in this one. You have a the black tank for the main bathroom, and then a black tank for the one that I just showed you on the other side at the rear. Uh, that would be number two. So I just want to let you know that after you dump your tanks, now you're gonna you're gonna dump the black tank first because that's toilet water and waste. It's the dirtiest. Then you'll dump the gray, which is sink and char water, right? Um, after you've done that, you could leave the black valve open, hook your hose up to this black flush num tank flush number one, and it'll spray out the inside of your tank and clean off the sensors, which is a good thing. It'll keep, uh, you know, so your sensors will, will give you an accurate reading on your monitor panel, that sort of thing. So it's a, it's a, it's really good to use the flush. And this second one is for the, the rear bathroom, the black tank in the rear bathroom. This, so you know, is just a winterizing hose. You'll have to learn a bit about that when you're going to winterize, but that's where you draw the antifreeze in, right there, um, when you're winterizing. You just put that right into a bottle of antifreeze and, and, and pump it right through your system, okay? All right, so I think that's everything there. Yes? All right, so this is, that's the furnace vent there. This is your water heater. Um, let me get it open here. So the thing to know about this, the switches to operate it are inside. This works on uh, both gas and electric, either or. Right now it's drained because you're, it's winterized, right? Uh, your drain plug goes right here. It's pulled out. As a matter of fact, this is it right here with an anode rod attached to it. Um, the thing to know is there's a switch here, a rocker switch on and off. We'll keep it off. Um, but that operates the heating element that's behind this cover right here. So even though the switches to operate are inside, this is an extra switch here for the heating element. So keep in mind that it's there, all right? Um, the, um, let me see here. When it comes to operating on gas, it's strictly the switches inside, so you just, you just turn it on. Always make sure that there's water in the tank before you operate the, the, uh, the water heater. You don't want to turn on the gas or electric when the, uh, when the uh, tank is empty because you'll damage it, okay? All right, let me put this back on here. If I can actually get it to go on, I'll be all set. Oh, is that it? There we go. Okay. All right, so um, this is uh, where one of your, your dump hoses go right here, of course. Um, the low point drains, which are just the lowest point of the plumbing, are right directly under there. Okay. Slide out. And second slide out. Okay, so this has a 50 amp system on it. So you <coughs> Excuse me, so you have a 50 amp power cord that's 30 feet long. Um, it's it's uh, 50 amp because it, it's it's uh, wired for two air conditioners, so you need that many amps. Right now we've got adapted it down adapted down to 30. As you can see, you get this adapter. Plus you get another one to adapt it down to 15. But keep in mind you can't run the air conditioners when you plug it in at home on 15 amps. You can just you can run everything else in the trailer, just not the air conditioner. So, all right, you got the outside grill as we spoke about. Um, you have a ladder, which makes it very easy. <coughs> excuse me, to go up there and to check. The seals on your roof, you, um, you go up there every 90 days or three times a season, let's say that once in the spring, once in the middle of summer, once in the fall, and you just look at all the sealant on the roof, look for cracking or separation, any, any warning uh, areas, and when you see something like that happening at some point, you don't know when or where, that's why you inspect it, you get it taken care of immediately. That's very important, okay? This is a backup camera mount here okay all right so let's walk around to the inside here once again I'm sorry about my camera work I uh, not the best equipment and I'm not the best camera person either so it's quite a combination okay hello Amanda hello okay so we'll look at the control panel first so these are just light switches here, okay? This is an inverter, so if you want to invert power, now this trailer does, it converts power, which is converting 110 AC down to, or over to 12 volt DC. It also inverts, it'll invert 12 volt DC from your batteries into 110 AC if you need to. So keep in mind, you have to turn it on to invert. Right there is inverting power. Uh, if you're not inverting, 
then you just keep it off, okay? I would bet in this one, the refrigerator is the only thing hooked up to the inverter. We'll, we'll have to read the, the uh, literature to find out for sure, but I'm sure that's the case. Okay. You can't invert all, all, the, all the AC power in this trailer. For example, you couldn't run your air conditioners off of two batteries being inverted. It's not possible. So, just keep that in mind. It's limited. Alright, so, this is your control panel. Uh, right there. My RV, which are just directions and videos. Your awning. Basically, you... Let me just go through them here. You can extend and retract your awning. Always keep the awning retracted when you're not at the campsite. Never leave it out when you're not there. Otherwise, it can get damaged very quickly. I mentioned you can operate your leveler from here. So here you have it. Um, auto level is very simple. Is you just push it and it levels it. Auto hitch height will return it to the last height it was at when it was hitched up. And rem always remember the last time. So. Um, to retract you would just put auto hitch height and it should be pretty darn close to to where you need it to be to hook up okay now you could also scroll through these um, directions here so I'll just go through them auto retract whoops auto retract manual retract okay then you can you can push the retract button and uh, you can auto retract or manually right you do it manually by pushing these buttons here they they uh they can operate the drag the jacks independently and then you can also extend manually also let me shut that off so we leave it where it should be okay um but like i said auto level is the most common and then to bring them up auto hitch height is the is the second most common okay all right so let me get back to where we want to be home okay lighting you can turn all the lights on and off at once um, like so, and back on, like that, okay? Um, the monitor panel is just that. It tells the levels of the tanks, as you can see. All your, your tanks are, are empty at this point. Your gas water heater is off. The electric is off. Remember, always make sure there's uh, water in the tank before you, uh, you operate them. The water pump here. Okay, uh, so that's where you operate all that stuff for your water system. And then, of course, the slide outs. Uh, bed slide and, and your main slide in and out. So it's very simple. Okay, you can enter a password if you choose to. Um, I don't know why you'd want to, but if you need to, you can do it. Your thermostat is very simple. You just hit the mode button to light it up. Right now it's set at heat, um, but you can sure turn it off. Then you can... Go to fan, uh, low, fan high, um, air conditioning high, air conditioning low, air conditioning auto. Auto is where you want to be on the air conditioning. Go to high auto, which is the next one, I believe. Yeah, cool high auto. That's the most common setting, for example. There's a, there's a lag time. So uh, when I choose the air conditioner, there could be a five or six second lag time before it turns on and turns off. So always keep that in mind. That's normal. Okay, so what do we got here? This is a um, kind of kind of theater thing. They're not seating. They're not independent, but it just has lighted cups and a footrest and that sort of thing. Now, this couch, if you pull the backs off like that, set them aside. You can grab it down here and you pull it out. It's a three-panel hide a bed, and they're all foam panels. So you can. Um, it's a pretty decent hide a bed. It's not like the old ones with the springs in it and the bar going through your back and that sort of thing. It actually works halfway decent. Um, this table can be dropped by pulling the poles out and using the back cushions to fill in space. You can make that into another uh, 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 bed if you need to. Plus, we'll go into this in a minute, but you got three more bunks back here. So there's a lot of sleeping room in this trailer for sure. Um, the refrigerator it works on a 110. Like I said, you can invert power when you're pulling it down the road. Now, when I said it, it takes the 12 volts from the battery and, and inverts it to uh, 110 AC, Keep in mind, when you're pulling it down the road, uh, your alternator on your tow vehicle will be charging the battery. And then the battery will be sending power to the inverter. So you can pull the trailer down the road with the refrigerator running, which is a good feature, of course. you got double doors here. you got a bottom freezer with an ice maker here. Right? So it's nice. Very nice. So 
The uh, microwave works like any other microwave. Except they haven't set it up yet, but it's, uh, it works like any other one. You have a light on it, and you have vent low and high and off. So that's good. Your, your oven and your range, uh, basically, it's sparse to light. I'm just, let me see if he's got the gas turned on. I'm sure he does. Yeah, so you can see I turned it on. I sparked this by turning it clockwise and light them like that, okay? Now the oven is a little different. The oven has a pilot light in it. Now the pilot light is all the way down here, all the way back. Let me see if I can show you the spark. I don't know if you can see that or not, but um, you spark it by turning this clockwise. So to, to light the oven, you're going to take the knob and you go to the picture of the pilot light right there. And then you depress it. Keeping it depressed, you're going to turn the sparker clockwise until you see the pilot light at the back down there light. Once that lights, you still keep this depressed and hold it in for another 10 or 15 seconds until uh, it gets warmed up. Then you go to operating temperature and it cycles on and off. But when you shut it off, the flame goes out, but so does the pilot light. So you got to relight the pilot light each time you um, use the oven. Also, I want to show you that this thing right here, this is to keep your refrigerator doors from flying open when you're traveling in transit. So you can see it, you probably see it screws in right there. Like right like that, and then you just screw it in there and tighten it up so you the doors won't come flying open. That's important because they'll get dented for sure if you don't do that. Okay, so the water filter I told you about you can install, you get one with you. It goes into that canister, the canister that you have to buy them. But then this is the canister wrench right here. So you're just going to um, put this over the canister and spin it off with that. Okay. Alrighty, so um, you have a TV which works like any other TV. You can it'll work off the antenna or off a campground cable or whatever you have. Um, you have a disc player here, DVDs and CDs, or you can stream off the USB port right here with it. Put all your favorite albums on one USB stick. You can uh, use Bluetooth and stream wirelessly with your phone or tablet. Um, so there's a lot you can do with it. You can there's three speaker zones. One is up front. In the bedroom, one is in here, or A is here, B is up front, and C is outside. So you can you can set the speakers that way. All right, USB charger. Keep in mind that. Uh, let me just make sure. Yeah, this is a. Let me see if it's a. This is a swing out bracket that locks into place. You actually pull, pull this rib cord to to free it up, and you can move it around so you can adjust it. The fireplace itself works on 110 AC. So you wanna. Um, Basically, if, if you want to conserve your LP gas, because you have a limited quantity, um, you can run this just to take the chill out. It's got a remote control right here. That's L means low fan speed. Um, let me show you here. That's high fan. So you can do that. Uh, you've got a timer on it. You can change the the uh, fire like so so there's a lot you can do with it it's a really good heater okay and the buttons are right there also you don't have to use the remote okay so let's see what else we've got here let's go into the bunk room actually I want to look for the power converter first I never finished talking about the power here let me look around it's here somewhere Okay, it's right over here. Oh, no, that's the vacuum. Oh, here we go. Okay. So, I told you inverted power. Inversion is taking 12-volt DC and converting it to 110 AC. Let me get this open here. Okay. Uh, conversion, which is common with trailers, it actually converts 110 AC to 12-volt DC. So, what you have here are regular household-style circuit breakers here, and this whole section here is 110 AC, and they're all labeled, right? Then the power is converted down here to 12 volt DC. You can see it's auto, regular automotive 12 volt fuses there, and they're all labeled. So this is the DC side of it. Um, if any of these fuses blow, you can actually see them glowing through this tinted plastic right here, all right? Um, now this has a fan in it, so you'll hear it kicking on and off when a load is put on it. Also, when you're plugged into shore power, this will charge your batteries up front. So it'll also keep your batteries charged up front. 
along with the alternator on your tow vehicle when you're pulling it. So you got this to charge it when you're at the campground, your tow vehicle charges it when you're in transit. So keep that in mind that this will keep your battery charged up. All right, now let's go back to the bunk room. So like I said, it inverts power, but I believe just the refrigerator, and then it converts power over to 12 volt for uh, basically anything that can't run on AC power. Some things like the air conditioner or the microwave have to be AC power. Um, but if it can run on 12 volts in a trailer, it does. Let's put it that way. So, Okay, so you have a fixed bunk right here. And then, uh, of course, you have storage in your ladder. And you have a, a media station here where you can hook up a, a satellite or camper on cable or antenna right here. And there's a, you can also put other devices, DV, DV, uh, disc, disc players or whatever else you want down there, sound system, whatever. You have a top bunk here. Now this top bunk will fold up to here and lock into place, right? Um, this bottom couch jackknifes flat. You would just pull the uh, lever here and it'll flatten out so it turns into a bed. And then you can just push back in and it locks into place and it turns back into a couch. So it's obviously right across from the TV so you can sit there and watch TV, whatever you choose to do. It's got a power vent up here. Right, and this is the remote for it, so you can open the lid and, and set the speed and all that sort of thing from it. Okay, I want to I want to, I want to remind you that all everything I'm showing you here, all the appliances and, and many of the devices in here are uh, are uh, all have a, a manual in the in the uh, in the packet that comes with it, so you can always read all that information. Also, a really good way to get information is to just write get the name of the product, the model number and uh, type it into a search engine and you'll be able to find manufacturers videos try to stick with the manufacturers videos because uh, they're the most accurate but you can get all the information you need off of the internet for sure all right so we we talked about the uh this bathroom uh when I, when I was on the outside the thing to know and this is the same for the other toilet also right now you see there's antifreeze in the system it's winterized but you, the black tank is directly below this, right? You can't run this without wa some water in it and chemical. So let's just say that uh, you just pulled into the campground, you hooked up your power and your water, so you, now you come in here, you take your chemical, whichever brand you use, you'll dump one dose right in the toilet bowl. Then you'll step on the pedal, and that's the black tank directly below. Um, because there's water hooked up, the water will come swirling out and going down the drain. You'll stand on the pedal until you put about a gallon or so of water into the tank. There's no way to tell exactly what that is, you know, how, how long to stand on it. Just use common sense. Um, you want water in there and chemical. If you don't do that, you'll regret it. The smell will be, uh, well, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about if you ever do it. So you always want to make sure when you start off with an empty black tank, you're going to put a gallon of water or so, or so in it and chemical before you start, all right? Let's say you're going to stay at a campground. Uh, you, you're still going to stay another week, but you had to dump the tank. So you dump the tank. And then you would come in here and repeat that procedure, chemical and water, so you can, for the next week, you know, so, okay, I think I made my point. Always have water and chemical in it. All right. So, let's see here. We'll go up front, towards the front here. All right. This is a vacuum here, your, for a built-in vacuum cleaner, so... You get a bag of, uh, of attachments right here. They're on the couch, if you can see them right there. Okay, so you can hook up to that. Um, the shower works like any other shower. The sink works like any other sink. The toilet is the same with, as with the other one. Always have chemical and the gallon of water to start off with, okay? It's the exact same model. Um, this GFCI here, for example, uh, everything in the tra every plug in the trailer is wired to a GFCI. There's probably two of them in this one, one towards the rear and then this one here. I'm telling you that so you know if, you, if you're using a, an appliance outside and it pops the breaker, you're going to be resetting it in here, so keep that in mind. So if you ever lose power, you know that's what happened and you've got to reset. Everything's wired to a GFCI in a trailer, all the plugs. Uh, this is a, your remote for this powered vent here, keep that in mind. Um, you can always, uh, a good do-it-yourself project or add-on project are, are covers for these. If you get the covers, you can keep them open during the rain or when they're in storage, that sort of thing. So keep in mind, you can get uh, clear ones, you can get 
uh, white ones or smoked black so there's some light still comes through but you can you can get covers for all these these vents if you need to I know it has a cover I'm trying to it, it's, it's not in case you don't know it's not just the cover because if you here let me show you see it opens up automatically fan goes on but there's a cover that goes over this whole thing the vent mate is a common max air is another one but that's a that's a, always a good add-on if you're if you're going to be uh, using an RV. So okay. All righty. So you got zone two here, second air conditioner. So that that thermostat works exactly like the other one, but it's your just for this room here. It looks like a 13.5. So I'm sure you get pretty darn cool in here if you uh, if you let it. Now this is pre-plumbed. For a washer comp dryer combo so you can write right here you can put them right here or you can just use it as a as a closet whatever you want to do yeah. take my advice on this if you choose <laughs> these you can just turn on by accident and water will come gushing out I, I suggest you go and get the plastic you know just go to Home Depot or Lowe's and get the a plastic cap to screw on there just to be safe it's just a it's just a good idea uh, because you don't want to flood your trailer out. Okay. Then you have another latch here, of course. And you got regular storage here, a lot of storage actually. You got I guess this would be used for shoes and shoe boxes and maybe folded, you know, stuff. And you got your your hanging rod there, so nice. Underneath the uh, underneath the bed you've got like a small shallow foot locker okay but you can put speaking of shoes you could probably put 20 pairs of shoes on there if you needed to I know my wife could uh, that wouldn't be enough space for her believe me so I know women love shoes um, so that's basically it in here you've got a place to hang a TV and hookups right there as you can see now keep in mind this this green light this is what I was looking for in the in the, in the living area make sure this is green that's the signal booster for the digital antenna. You can shut it off like that if you wanted to, but keep it on or you won't get a good picture. It'll get all, you'll lock up and it'll just be, it won't work very well. Now this is your antenna right here and you just can rotate it this way. It doesn't go up and down like they used to, you just rotate so you can still fine tune it. All right, so I think that's about it. Let me walk back this Here, way. Carl. Okay, I'll try. <laughs> okay. All right, thanks, thanks for buying your trailer here at National RV Detroit. And uh, remember what I told you about inspecting your roof seals and the seals on your trailer. That's an important thing when you own it. And um, just make sure you get a lot of good use out of it, okay? Thank you very much.